Hey folks, Brian here with you for Bob Botanicals, and today we're going to be looking at building some swarm traps. So let's check out what we got going on. Uh, swarm season is upon us. It's a beautiful day. I just got a call from a friend that says the swarms are out there flying. He just caught a massive one. So good for him. Not so great for me. But we're going to build some traps and see what we can get out of these guys. So let's take a look at what we have going on here. So you guys have seen probably on Linda Tillman's blog or one of the other beekeeping websites where the people are building these flower pot based swarm traps and these are really just kind of uh, these two paper mache type of flower pots stuck together sealed and then we seal up you know all but one of these holes and then they hang them in a tree the problem is that with these guys uh, obviously if you get a big bunch of bees in there to get them out is going to be a cutout and that's a problem that's a big problem because not only is that a lot of work, which is really my main objection to it, but it's kind of traumatic to the bees to cut all that comb out and then try to stick it in a frame and mess with it and do all kinds of stuff. So I decided to do a little bit better job with it, or at least a little bit different job, where we use one of these jobbies here. This is a medium frame. You could probably do it with a shallow frame as well. Basically what we're going to do, if I could do this with one hand, is we're going to shove this guy in here like that. And then, just like before, we're going to seal it up this way. And so this thing will sit horizontal, as soon as we work it in there correctly. Basically, it'll sit horizontal, and it'll hang by this hook here. And the nice thing about that is that we put all the weight on the frame itself. So the frame actually holds the buckets or the uh, flower pots up. And uh, we'll show you what we got going on. So first thing to do is, because these are paper mache and they would uh, not hold up too well in the weather, is you want to waterproof them. I guess you could probably do it without waterproofing, but to do this, I'm just using uh, Thompson's water seal uh, in a little spray bottle. And to get that going, you just, you know, it's that easy. You just let it in there, and it soaks in, and then it dries. Give it a couple days, and then you're ready to go with it. All right, so you can see here, some of our pots here are drying a little bit. We've got uh, Thompson's water seal on them, and they're soaking in. Uh, let them dry in the shade and take a couple hours, and then let them just sit overnight in a dry place and let them soak in and cure. Uh, here's some ones that we did a little bit more recently. There's still some stuff on the outside. Don't be afraid to give that stuff a good coating. Uh, it'll all soak in and help uh, protect those pots from water damage and stuff. Um, the whole thing is that those pots are really designed to break down, so you want to try to inhibit that process as much as possible by sealing them off. Um, you could probably use anything else, like uh, you could dip them in bees beeswax if you wanted to. Uh, that would probably work pretty well too. Much better than the water seal, I'm sure, because it would be much more attractive. But for my purposes, we're using Thompson's water seal because I don't have like five gallons of beeswax to soak that stuff in. But you could do it, I guess. So the next stage is going to be to, uh, to make these guys here. These are the frames. Now this is a medium frame, and it's got this wire sticking out of it. And basically, we're going to hang this sucker up like that. We'll have a, have a wire there. And this is pretty strong. This is 17-gauge electrical fence. This stuff's at Tractor Supply, I don't know, 13 14 20 bucks or something for a big, huge roll of it. It'll last forever. Uh, so we'll take about three feet of stuff here, and we'll run it through that and um, basically give it some twists. And make it work out, make it uh, so. In order to do that, what we did is we took our frame, we found the middle of it. And I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but we put we put a little hole in it. I don't know if you can see the hole. Anyway, there's a hole right there that we did uh, with a little bitty eighth of an inch drill bit. Oh, there it is. You can see it now. Uh, and we're going to take and we're going to feed our wire through that, right? like that and then we'll pull it through and I can't do it with one hand but you can see what we did is we pulled it through here gave it some twists wound it all the way up and then made a loop came around and then twisted the rest of it up in here and this makes a pretty strong um, connection so this is not going anywhere certainly not by any weight that the bees had ever put on it um, <clears throat> and the idea again is that uh, when this thing's hanging up, remember we're not putting the weight on the pots themselves, we're putting the weight on this top bar. So hopefully that'll help uh, lend a little stability to the whole thing by not uh, 
putting some undue stress on these pots here. They can split or cause problems or whatnot. Um, so I've got a couple more of these to do, and then uh, we'll pick up with the next step. All right, here's some pots that we did a few days ago, and they've already been waterproofed and got the stuff soaked into them. So the next step is going to be to seal some of these holes in the bottom. So on each one of these things, we're going to leave one of these holes open. Actually, not on each one, but for each swarm trap, one of these will remain open at the bottom, and that's for the bees to go in and out of. The rest of them, we're going to seal, and we're going to seal it with um, expanding foam insulation. Now, I've found through some experimentation and cussing and swearing that probably the best way to do this is to put this thing down on a piece of aluminum foil here so you don't get a, a big mess of stuff. And then ever so carefully just give it a little controlled squirt down in here like that. And that will continue to expand. Don't need much. It does it does a pretty good job on its own. Just make sure you get it down down in here. And that stuff will continue to expand over the next little bit. Like that. Alright, so once that's done, you take you pick it up off the aluminum foil here as such. There's some stuff there. If you look at the bottom, that's pretty good. Those are some nice looking fills. So we got the whole thing there. Later on, if this becomes an issue, if there's too much gunk in here, we can always come back with a knife and trim it out. Um, here's one I just did. You can see it's kind of continuing to blurp on in there. And then here's one I did a few minutes ago. That's definitely probably gonna have to be trimmed out. So um, just keep that working. And then once they're, once they're setting, you can sit there and there's enough of a gap between you can put them, stack them together like that. It's no problem. So. I'm going to get the rest of these guys done and then we'll move on to the next step, which will be somehow managing to get the frames inside and then sealing them up. So that should be fun. All right, so let's take a look at some of the ones we've been working on a little bit here. This is almost the finished product. And you can see it's it's got our uh, wire hanging there. Inside of this box is the frame. These two shells are fastened with some short decking screws. I think those are deck mates, about one and five eighths or whatever. Um, you've got the one hole down here that's open for the bees to get out. That's on the bottom. So this thing will hang kind of like that in a tree. It will rust up against a branch or whatever. And then this hole will be on the bottom. And on the inside of there is the frame. So here's how we're going to put one of these together. So we got these two pots. One we've you know foam insulated, closed all four holes on the bottom. The other we've only done three, right? So the, the bottom, the bottom three there, or the one that's open, is going to be the one for the bees. Here is our frame. It's got a little bit of old comb on there. I've put some fresh beeswax just to kind of make it smell better. You can see here's our wire. This is 17 gauge electric fencing and we just kind of uh, wrapped it around here. I drilled a small hole in the middle and ran it up to this, this loop, right? So we've got the nice strong, nice strong uh, point of leverage there and the frame bounces out real nice. And so what we'll do is we'll take and we'll put the frame in here. As such, this kind of requires a little bit of maneuvering. I've also got some old comb here that I've kind of scraped out and saved, and we'll throw some of that in there too. That's a really good attractant, is uh, some of this old comb. I like that stuff. And then we take our uh, flower pot and we make sure that the open hole is at the opposite end as the wire. And then we just kind of maneuver it down on here, which is Kind of take some doing with one hand. So, there we go. And so you can see, we've got our hole over here. We've got our hanger over here. The frame is uh, in there, hanging pretty freely. And all we got to do now is kind of line these things up as best we can on the edges. And that's what's going to have to do right there. It's going to take a little. A little trickery, but it's not too bad. And then, okay, so we've got these two clamshells together, basically. The next step is to fasten them. And so what I've been doing, and this may or may not be the official correct way to do it, but um, I've been kind of taking these uh, 
these one and five eighths decking screws here on my drill and see if I can do this without knocking it over uh, kind of on the uh, 11 o'clock and one o'clock position on the uh, on the hanger here I've been sort of putting these in and you got to kind of be a little careful with these do it real slow just let the screw carry itself in there don't bear down on it and again this is like paper mache stuff so you'll see once it makes contact it'll go in and it'll sandwich down um, you can really over torque these pretty easy so just be careful um, one of the things I figured out pretty quick is that you don't want to take this down all the way because with these things being so flexible the other end would bow up and then you'd have to go back and loosen them so much like in the way you would put a tire back on a car you sort of put them all on there um, and then tighten them up in sort of a, a star fashion so the, the configuration I've been using is a nail or a screw here and screw here sort of at the uh, the 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock positions and I've got one in the 6 o'clock and then I've got you know one in the three and the nine so basically sort of a you get pretty good coverage all the way around and um, what you end up with we can go ahead and put maybe one more screw in here and just see how it how it goes together So again, real, just when it starts to kind of sandwich together, that's when you back off on it. You can really just punch these through if you wanted to. And you kind of want to look and see, hey, you know, where's a good spot to put a screw? It doesn't have to be in the exact spot, but for example, um, right here, this is kind of thin, so maybe not there, but this piece looks a little thicker. That might give you more bite, and these line up really well. So that'll probably be where the next screw goes and over there. But um, this thing is actually sturdy enough at this point, believe it or not, with just these two or two or three screws in here, Actually, no, just the two that um, you can pick it up and toss it around. This thing is not uh, going to fall apart. So what we have in here is we've got this hanger, and this whole thing is supported by the, the length of the top bar, which is contacting the flower pots on either side like that. So um, it seems pretty solid. We'll see how it works. And then, of course, um, over here on the bottom is where the bees are going to come in. So this guy will be hoisted up into the trees. This probably weighs about, I don't know, five pounds maybe on the outside probably less than that and um, we'll get it up in the trees the nice thing about that is you can get it pretty high up because it's, it's so light you can just take it all the way up in the trees and then uh, have it hanging from a rope up against the trunk or up against the branch and then um, and then just have it there and keep an eye on it and then when it's full when you've got a swarm in there hopefully fingers crossed uh, you can let it down just as easily so um, next step will be to go in and there's some gaps some of these things here so you want to make sure this is sealed tight you can see there's some small gaps here we're going to seal those probably using the same foam insulation because it cures fast and it expands and it's not going to leave any any big problems there so uh, once that's done these things will be ready to hang and we'll, we'll go about doing that as well okay so we are uh, just wrapped up with one of these so you can see the rain's moving and you probably heard the thunder uh, we're under a severe thunderstorm warning, I guess, which, um, I don't know, looks kind of cool. But you can see what we've done here on these all these little gaps and uh, pockets here because you wanted this thing to be completely sealed except for that one hole. Um, actually, this one looks pretty good. But you can see there's some gaps there, not big ones, but um, the, uh, the foam insulation, the great stuff or whatever you want to call it, works really well if you just run a small, tiny little bead around the edge of that seam it'll fill that stuff in pretty well and you'll be uh, you'll be in much better shape for it and so that once it's all set that way we can take this guy and hang it up in a tree or wherever we want to hang it up to you can get this up pretty high and hopefully we'll catch some bees there so uh, when the rain lets up we'll walk through uh, hanging one up there and take a look and see how it uh, how it looks So let's take a look at the finished product. All right, so here's our trap. We've got, I see we've got one thing open here towards the bottom. 
one hole there, which is opposite of the hanger. You can probably hear the hanger is holding the frame, and the frame is kind of in there holding up the two pots. You can also see the screws are there, and then I've got a real thin bead of foam that ran along this seam here to seal this thing up completely. The only point of concern I have is this space right here where there might be a little bit of um, a little bit of gap there just because of the wiggling of the wire. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Uh, other than that, all these uh, all the holes are plugged. There's a, a frame in there. There's some old comb in there, and I've also put in some uh, lemongrass oil as a lure and peppered a little bit on the front there just to kind of get it out in the air. So. Now we're out back in the woods of my house and we're looking for some place to hang this sucker. And I'm looking for a place that's about 20 feet up, south facing, and shaded. So one of these tree branches here I'll be able to pick out and see, you know, probably something like that. I'll find a nice spot and I'll throw a rope up there, which is here. I'll throw this rope up there and then hoist it up and then we'll fix it in place and cross our fingers. Alright, so let's try it. All right, so we've got our trap hung, and I think it's in a pretty good spot. So let's take a look. If you look right up here, uh, we're in a pine tree. The entrance is facing south. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, it's swinging a little bit in the breeze, but it's a pretty strong breeze, so I'm not too concerned about it. That wire handle is up over the branch and bent, so I think it's going to hold it fairly steady. So I'm not too worried about that. It's facing south. It's got a nice bit of shade on it, but it's visible enough. It also has a really nice view overlooking this field, so uh, it would be pretty easy for bees to home in on this guy. Uh, they do tend to prefer edge type of environments. So for swarms, you know, a, a tree that's out in the middle of a field, like maybe that pine tree over there will hit next, or uh, maybe some other tree we've got kind of standing out in the, in the middle of a field. Uh, they kind of like those. Those are my uh, assistant beekeepers, by the way, over there. Uh, they kind of like those. So this, I think, is a pretty good spot. We're shaded, we're, sp we're south facing, and we've got a good overlook. Uh, it's pretty visible, it's easy to navigate, and uh, we are actually upwind from a hive that I don't know where it is, but I've, I've beelined where I've kind of baited bees over here We're using honey and I've tracked their direction of flight, and they do kind of fly straight over this little wooded area. So somewhere in that direction I think is a beehive, which is close enough to smell the lure on here because it's close enough to smell honey. So. Um, this guy here, all I did was take a rock and tie it to this line, throw it over that branch. I saved you the uh, 15 minutes it took me to get it over the right branch. Um, and then we just tied it off to this tree. Now obviously this is not uh, any level of quality. This is just me making a big mess so that I can get the video done. I'll come back later, clean this up so it's nice and pretty and not a big waste of rope. But for now, you can see we just hoisted it up. Now the next time I need to check it, all I can do is untie the rope here, let it down, Take a look at it, maybe put some more bait in it. Hopefully the next time I let it down, there'll be more bees in it, or there'll be bees in it. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes. So this is a really easy way to uh, build and deploy swarm traps. They're cheap. Um, we'll see how they last, we'll see how they do. I can't really tell you if they're gonna be successful or not. We'll just have to see. And that's part of the great stuff about beekeeping is that you just don't know and it's open to experimentation. So a lot of folks run these things uh, vertically. They run them without frames in it. This is a little bit different. Hopefully the frame in there will make a big difference. I put some fresh beeswax on it. And make Maybe it'll make it easier uh, for them to build on or for, them, for me to get them out of the box. I don't know. We'll see. So hopefully uh, that'll be a good problem to have. So uh, I hope that helped. You guys uh, see if you can't put some of that to use. Let me know how it goes for you. And uh, good luck with your swarm trapping. Have a good week. Take care.